On this episode, I make the inside connecting rods. These look like an easy project for a weekend, but as you would have come to expect, nothing's ever easy. So several weeks and visions later, we have these. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. So let's start with the failed attempts. These are the part finished attempts, but each one had a design flaw, so I started again. My main consideration here is I wanted to be able to replace the connecting rod without disassembling the engine and taking out the crankshafts. So all the access needs to be from one side, and the axle boxes need to be in two parts. With that out of the way, let's get started with the axle boxes. I'm making these from some old brass bus bar that had a row of small holes in it, so it wasn't good for any big parts. I square the ends on the mill using a 12mm end mill. Once I've done that, I set the Z height with the digital readout and then start machining the material to size. Once the material is the size, I switched to a 4mm end mill. This will be used to form the slot feature on each side. As always, the end mill is being held in an ER32 collet chuck. If you want to learn more about ER collets, I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner for my video about this. Once the slot feature is complete, the next step is to cut the block in half. This will provide the two matched halves. To split the block, I use a hacksaw, and this only needs to be rough, as each side will get machined to its final size. With the halves machined to final size, the next step is to machine the main part of the connecting rod. This has a fork on each end to accept the axle boxes, and the centre thinned to pass over the traction engagement shaft. There's then a screw hole at either end to hold the axle boxes in place. The material I'm using for this is some old mild steel square bar. It's even still painted and has an old weld on it, but that won't make any difference to my part. I'm machining the part to size using a 12mm roughing end mill. I find roughing end mills more effective for removing bulk material. There's a couple of downsides to these. They leave a serrated pattern on a side cut and it's easier to overheat the cutting edge. Once both sides are machined, the material is down to thickness, the next step is to do the two edges. I only have about a half millimetre to come off either side, so not much more than the coat of paint. The 
part is then machined to length. This is done first by machining one end, flipping the part and checking the length, then the digital readout can be set for the final cut. For the part to length, the next step is to cut the profile on the sides. This is done using a 6mm end mill and located using the digital readout. With both sides machined, I move to cutting the fork in the ends. This is once again done using the 6mm end mill, with material being removed in 1mm passes. This setup wasn't the most secure, but it ended up working out alright. With the fork feature completed on either end, the next step is to drill the holes in either end. The hole is drilled at 1.5mm to suit an M2 thread. To start the drill, I use the picking technique. You make a very light cut, then lift up, and then finally drill the hole. This stops the drill bit deflecting and going off course. The alternative to this would have been using a spotting drill, but this is really too small for one of those. With the thread cut, it's time for a pre-assembly. The brass axle boxes are fitted, followed by the small M2 screws. Screws are filed down to size, and then it's time to head back to the mill, where the holes for the crankshafts will be drilled. For this I start with a spotting drill, followed by working through several sizes of drill. Brass tends to drill easily, but has a habit of grabbing, so this is why I opted to work through the sizes of drill. The holes are machined the exact distance apart required, using the digital readout to locate them. If these are even slightly out, the connecting rod won't work, and the mechanism will jam. From here I can move to thinning the connecting rod. For this I've made up a quick jig with a couple of holes drilled that the connecting rod can be bolted to. The connecting rod's being thinned out to 2mm thick and I'm using a 6mm end mill to make the cut. This is done in a single pass as the part wouldn't be strong enough for a second cut. Now there's one more feature that needs to be machined in. For this I'm going to use the rotary table, but a faceplate on the lathe could be used instead. For this setup, I've got a 6mm arbor located in the centre of the rotary table. This is being used to locate the part, with a clamp on the outer edge to stop it rotating. A screw in the centre also stops the part lifting.
Now it's time for assembly. So I removed the bottom part of the frame to gain access. You'll also notice I've finished my other three crankshafts now, all using the two-piece method, and they're looking much better. Even though these are designed to be assembled in place, it's much easier to do it on the bench. So that's how I'm going to do it. Once they're assembled and the screws are in place, they can be located. It seems easy enough to be able to drop them in now. But once the wheels are pressed on the bottom and the flywheel is on top, then this won't be possible. If you want to learn more about what I'm making, check out my video, How Does a Fell Engine Work? Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Catch you next time.